This is Adam Paul Seagram from MyDrawingTutorials.com. In this lesson, we're going to be painting a still life apple. So to, during today's lesson, we used these brushes. This is again the bevel edge wedge cut. It's a house painting brush, very high quality, good for big areas and for cutting lines. This flat, soft brush, flat, a bit stiffer brush, and the small detail brush. Okay, the first step in painting a still life of an apple some highlight and shadow and a dark background is I'm using this for a template. So I'm going to lay this off not in the center of the canvas but a little offset for more interest and uh, I'm just going to use once again draw the apple. It's a basic circle. We will let the bottom flatten out a little bit when we get to that point. It's sitting. The apple isn't a perfect circle and we will flatten the top just a hair also and flatten the bottom hair also. So I'm going to flatten my top of the apple to take out that circle I drew. It just removes it, takes it from the bottom as well. So the apple comes in at the top like that. To begin this painting we'll need these colors. Bright red, black, white, brilliant green, thallo green, also known as thallo, and bright yellow. And to create a background, we're going to use some black. We've got some on my palette right here. I've got some red out. I want a little bit of green because I want to make a nice brown, earthy tone. And we're going to add a little bit of white just to have it on hand to soften things. I'm going to use my large brush once again, the bevel brush, flat house painter brush, high quality for establishing a big background. A little bit of water. I'm going to use it for mixing. Or I could use the palette knife first. Pull these colors together. The red and the black and the green to make a nice rich dark brown. Hint of white. Coming out a little green so we want to put a little more red in it. Red and green will make brown. There we go. A nice chocolate, dark chocolate coffee color. Very rich. Be a good background for us. And I'm going to take that right off the palette knife onto the brush, clean it a bit, and work that in. A touch of water. So we'll just start with the background, filling in. Oh, it's a black. We need a little more red, looks like. There we go. More of a chocolate. Very dark. I rarely use pure black because it, you rarely find pure black. It always has a tint. Very, you look very carefully, there's a hue of something else in it. So in painting, that's a good thing to remember. Just going around the edge. Not being very careful, just establishing that round edge of the apple. I'll let that dry. Come down lower, and we're going to have a nice long shadow on the table because the light source will be coming from here. Just work that out. Now we want to make a lighter brown for the base of the table here, so we'll take some of our white. I'm going to add some yellow to it to warm it up, lighten it up. A little red. There we go, and some more white. And a little more yellow. There we go. Give it a nice tan. A still life is always a great exercise in learning more about how you paint. It's a study of light and shape. Work some of this in behind. We have a long shadow coming off of the apple. And we let that just fade into the background. Soften that shadow just as the slightest. Okay, now we're ready to begin painting our apple. We've switched palettes because the other had a lot of dark, muddy colors on it. And we want you to go to something much brighter and lighter and fresher for the green apple. We'll, we have our, again, once our, again, our white 
fair amount of white. Just a little bit of green. That's all we'll need, I imagine. And a fair amount of yellow. I'm going to do a green apple. And I'm going to use the big brush once again for starters. And our light source is coming from here. So there will actually have white highlighted here, but we're gonna this will be a darker shade of green, and this will be very limey, kind of a green apple. I'll we'll start with white and yellow, a pinch of green. So we're gonna I can see that we're gonna need a lot of yellow in this painting and a lot of white and not much green. There's a nice green right there. So we're gonna start by pulling the edge. This is just a background. We can enhance it later. We want to just fill in the white basically at this point. And use this hard, this nice clean edge of this wonderful brush. Just ride, just ride that line around. Go a little bit, going a little bit over the brown. So we get a clean edge. Crisp. I'm going to leave that area for light. This will be our light area. With the light's hitting it. We'll come around this side. Just a little bit, our paint is just slightly wet so that it glides. Okay, and it's already beginning to look quite a bit like an apple. Now I'm going to mix some thicker color using the same colors. Quite a bit of yellow, a little, just a little bit of green. start filling in my color here. So again, this is a good brush. You could use a smaller one. This also would work. I, I'm still, I may switch, I will switch, but right now I'm still sticking with this because I'm doing big, biggish areas. Largish areas. Now I'm going to fill in a bit of a darker shade on this side. So I'm going to make a darker shade of the same color. Deeper value. Still a lot of yellow, a lot of white. It's truly an apple, what we call apple green. Blending it into that still wet lime. Just blending back and forth. Nice soft finish. I'm going to add a little bit of it up in here because the stem will be coming out of the center. Just to get that going. Now I want to go even deeper here. So I get some more shadow and deeper color. A hint of color, water. And I'm going to put that right over here. Indeed, we're covering our area. And blend that in. A little bit more of that. Just put it right in there. Pulling it through. Blending it in. As we go. Just where it be in there. There's always just a little subtle texture in the apple because it has little dents in the skin, as all apples do. Now at this point, I want, I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to put this aside for a minute. And I'm going to pick up the small detail brush, this one. And I'm going to add, get it a little bit damp. I'm going to go into my darker green, with a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to add the opening for, for the stem. 
just by doing that. And then I'm going to take the this brush. It's flat but soft. It's a blunt edge in that same color. And a couple pull away from that little line to create an indentation for this, this where the stem can come from. Just by adding some darkness. And it's again on the side of the shadow where the light is passing over it, showing you the opening. Just let that be like that. And I'm going to take some of the same color, just a drop of water, not even a droplet, I'd say, and pull a little bit of that down into here, to the darkest area also with this brush. And I'm going to go back with my large brush, get the water out of it, and go over that and soften it. Just work it in there gently. side for a second. I'm going to take some white, which I have right here, white and yellow, and I'm going to make the other portion of the opening for the stem. I've got too much paint on there. By dragging that around up over here, highlighting the, light, the lit side, sketching that in, Just blending it in, and I'm going to switch brushes again and go to the little detail brush and go into some, go for some pure white. Softly add a little bit of yellow in that white. Okay, cut that in. Blend it in, using my finger in this case. make an edge. This brush is a little not exactly right for that, so I will need this one again. Soften it. There we go. Don't hit it too many times. Just blending it. Now, I want to fill this in because it was just raw canvas, basically. With white. Softening it. We're going to dry this, these areas with a dryer so that we can come in with a final coat. So we don't want to lift the paint that's already there. At this point, I'm introducing a tube of brown called Raw Umber because this is a black brown. And it's just handier to have some on hand. For, and I'm going to use it for details here. Now, I will use this brown to create a stem. Again, we need yellow. I'm going to mix the brown with the yellow to get a nice tan. And we need some more white. And a pinch of red. So, we have to decide which way we went. I don't, I don't want the stem going straight up, but I think I'd like it bending a bit. So going right down to the edge here, and just pull it up. Might take a couple passes to get it right, to get the color, not the saturation. Then I'm going to take the darker brown, create a shadow on the back side, using the tip of the brush. Washing that out. Back to the light color again. Put more light on the top. And washing it again. We'll put a little bit of white 
on the light edge. Starting at the top. Just blends down. Yeah. You want less white at the bottom because again the light is reduced. Put just a little bit more of the white in here. And we'll wash that out and go back to this brush. Back into our lime green again, our greens. By now these are starting to set up so we may have to make a little bit more. We've got yellow here. That's good. Okay, We're using this brush. I'm going to come into here again. What have we got? A little bit of water. Go over that. Go over apple green. Just softening it out. Smoothing it out. And we'll add a little more yellow. For this side. I want to darken this up a bit again. I'm going to pull some of that brown into it. There we go. Now this is the point where I like to pull back, take a break, and look at the work and see if it needs anything else from stepping back from it. Okay, coming back to the painting, I see a couple things I want to do when I step back. I think a little bit less of the large white area. Back some of that lime. Just soften it down a bit. So there you have it, still life apple. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. For more acrylic tutorials, be sure to sign up for our free newsletter. Just go to mydrawingtutorials.com forward slash acrylic or click the link in the description. Until next time, happy drawing and painting.